Welcome to the WHBC Sunday Talks podcast. Sunday Talks is a weekly roundtable discussion about theological and cultural topics. For more information and show notes, visit whbcconway.org slash Sunday Talks. Here's your host, Pastor Larry White. Welcome to Sunday Talks. Sunday Talks is an online uh Sunday night version of what we do here at Woodland Heights Baptist Church. It's time for us to gather, sometimes for me to do teaching and do interviews and to share about some things that are on my heart. And so this winter we have been doing a series I'm calling Good Books, uh, sharing with you. It will be nine books after after this next session that have had a big impact in my life that I wanted to share with you, our congregation, other people that will watch Sunday Talks, uh, things that have encouraged me and I hope maybe will spark an interest in you that you decide to to pick up one of these books and read it for yourself. Part of the reason that I want to do this is because I want to encourage reading. Um, uh, you know, we live in a very fast-paced, online, and uh, video-driven world where everything is instant before us. The reading that a lot of people do is, is just from a, an article or a blog or something they read on a post that they've seen online. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not subst- uh, substantial and really... Uh, most of the time, it's probably not very life changing. What you read on a on a Twitter, uh, you know, feed, you're probably not going to change your life. But um, by reading a book, I think by you know whether it's a physical copy that you hold in your hands or where you're reading it on your your device, I think it proves that it just it just it's helpful to us in our growth and development as people. We learn. We're educated through reading. Uh, we it's, science has found that you know when children, the more they read at an earlier age. Uh, the better they will do in education and, and all types of education, whether it's whether it's English or mathematics or whatever it may be. And so I'm a big proponent for reading. I, I'm thankful that, you know, I grew up uh, as a child here in Conway going to the Faulkner County Library, and I'm thankful for my parents instilling in me that desire to read. But there's a bigger reason about why I want you to read. It's not just that you read good books, and I want, do want to encourage that, but as Christians, we have a book. We know that. We have the Bible. And if we don't have a love for reading or a desire to read, there's a good probability we're probably not going to read the book, the most important book. And if we don't read that, then we're not going to know what God intends for us to know and, and know how to live the Christian life and what His His goals and plans are for us. And so I want I, this is part of the reason I want to talk about good books is I want you to read other books, but certainly don't don't neglect the reading of the Bible. Uh, and I know that that in for me one way that helps me to read is to read a variety of things. Uh, when it comes to, to secular books or just other, even Christian books that I might read, uh, I keep a stack of books. In fact, I get books given to me sometimes from members in the church or or um, uh, one of the seminaries or, or Lifeway Christian books will send a book. And so I'll have, I may have a stack of seven to eight books that will either be in my office or on my bedside. And I may just read through a chapter or two of one of those. If it doesn't interest me, I'll put it aside and I'll move on. And so I, I, I may be reading two or three books at a time to kind of keep some variety and also I don't get bogged down in one unless it's something of really of interest to me. I think we can do the same thing in our Scripture reading. Uh, not that we, would, we would, would neglect any part of Scripture, but uh, if you read you know, uh, chrono- chronologically through the Bible, you may find it difficult when you get to, to Levit- Leviticus and Deuteronomy or even to the book of Revelation. Uh, you may want to read those that way, and it's perfectly fine to do that. But I found for me, uh, my interest level or my my ability to retain and, and get something from it kind of weighs there when when I when I just do that. So I want to read a maybe a psalm, maybe from the Gospels, as well as reading from Leviticus or Genesis or whatever the books I'm reading, and just to, just to make sure that I'm 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 getting it all. Well, today I want to introduce a book to you that I think will, will help you. And I, I, it's one of those books for me that I read it by itself, and I read it uh, pretty quickly. I consumed it fast because it, it was, spoke to me. It's called Burn Your Goals. It's written by two guys, uh, Joshua Medcalf and Jamie Gilbert. And uh, I want to tell you, tell you a little bit about this and, and talk to you about it. How I heard about this, in fact, I'm, I'm taking this book through with our staff uh, on Monday mornings when we gather after we have our meeting. We sit down, we talk about a couple of chapters each week, and I think it's been helpful to us. 
Last year, I was I was listening to the University of Arkansas women's basketball coach Mike Neighbors talk, and he was asked in in an interview, "What are your team's goals for this year?" And he had a very quick response. It kind of shocked me. He said, "We don't have goals," and he said, "We haven't had any goals for a while." And I was kind of sh- shocked by that, and I thought, "Well." What team doesn't have goals? I mean, you're, you're a basketball team. In fact, one of the things you do is you talk about how many goals you're going to make and how you make goals. And you, that's one of the, the, the keys of the game is making a goal, a basketball goal. And, uh, but he said, we don't have any goals. But then his response was uh, that we don't have goals because we have standards. And we have standards that we carry over year after year. And so then he explained that he came to this change after reading this book, Burn Your Goals. The subtitle is The Countercultural Approach to Achieving Your Greatest Potential. He said he read this book, and it just revolutionized how he thought about uh, the strategy he used to lead his team and for his teammates. And so uh, it's been a very helpful book. Now, I would say to you, this is not necessarily a Christian book. It is written by two men that are Christians, and uh, they're, some of their testimony you'll find in, in the book. But it was written largely for uh, coaches and athletes, and these two men have, have, have mentored coaches and speak to coaches, speak to teams, uh, deal with athletes one-on-one. But I found a lot of that's transferable to Christian life, and I want to point out to you some of those. A lot of what they share is built on biblical principles and things you'll find right in the Bible. What made this book intriguing to me, the thought of burning your goals and, and not having goals, was that I have had difficulty in my life sometimes of not only the goal setting, but more importantly of carrying out how do I accomplish those goals and keeping those goals. And uh, as I've read this, I, I've, I've just been intrigued by what they've done. Uh, if, you, if, you, uh, for, if you like John Wooden, the uh, basketball coach who was at the University of uh, UCLA back in the 60s and 70s, uh, some of you are old enough to remember remember him. I heard stories about him, but uh, legendary coach uh, led them to national championships uh, several years in a row. Won more national championships in, in college basketball than anybody else. But uh, this is largely built on a lot of things that he taught and believed, and so. That was intriguing to me as well, and it helped me to, to, to desire to do this. And so what I want to do today is just share with you seven takeaways. I've got about 40 that I could share, but I want to just highlight seven of those. Most of those come in the first part of the book. Uh, and just, just to share these, these seven takeaways of burn your goals, the countercultural approach to achieving your greatest potential. Here's the, here's the first, and this is really the premise on which this book was written. And that they make this statement. Rarely do we control what happens to us, but we have 100% control of explaining what happened to us. In other words, we don't control uh, the, 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 uh, 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 what's going on, the, 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 the outcome. We do control our response to that. We do control our, our attitude. We control how we're, going to, how we're going to move forward from there. Uh, we can look at our circumstances. We become a victim, and, and we live in a victimized culture everybody's a victim of something it seems all the time and when we're the, always the victim we never grow we, we never overcome but as christians we're called to be overcomers and so uh, i think it's a great way to start the book of that no matter what you do no, whether you set goals or not you you got to make a decision that hey i'm going to i'm going to control how i respond to things i'm going to be in control of that and the second second takeaway i would give to you is one of the key components in the book he talks about they talk about our is this thought of true mental toughness. True mental toughness. Um, again, it's written with coaches and athletes in mind, and so that, that would seem to make sense about being mentally tough. But that's not just something for sports. Uh, we need that in every part of our life, no matter what your job is or what you do if you're in school. Uh, you need to be mentally tough. And, and the way they define this is with five things. Is one is, first of all, having a great uh, attitude. Uh, having the right kind of attitude. Now, that's, that's to me, I think, is one of the few things in life we do control is our attitude, and so that that's important. Then, secondly, giving your very, very best. Uh, we always giving our very, very best. To when, am I am I serving the Lord the way I can? Am I serving uh, in whatever capacity I'm in? Am I working at my best ability? Am I, am I studying to the best of my ability? Third is treating people really, really well. Uh, and I think this is this is perfect uh, thing for Christians. It's what we're called to do. Um, having Fourth, having unconditional gratitude, being grateful, 
And fifth, and really an umbrella over all those, is regardless of your circumstance, I'm going to have these these things. Great attitude, giving your very, very best, treating people very, really, really well, having unconditional gratitude regardless of the circumstance. Now, when I read those things, I think this is what Jesus modeled for us. This is what he taught the disciples. This, these are the teachings of Paul in the New Testament. That This is what the Christian life is about. It's about having the right attitude. It's about giving your best. It's about treating others the way you would want to treat yourself. It's about having gratitude toward God and others. And doing all those things regardless of the circumstances. The Bible doesn't say that I'm to live the Christian life when it's convenient for me or when I'm comfortable with it, but that I'm to do this all the time. And so this has been really matches up with what I believe we're taught as Christians. A third takeaway is that the book emphasizes process over outcome. Again, you go back to goals, and goals are all about the outcome, the end result. Uh, but I found that it, what, what I learned from the journey, from the process of getting to that goal or whatever it is I'm pursuing, is more rewarding sometimes than uh, the accomplishment, just like it may be on a, on a trip you take. Uh, we have a destination in mind we want to get to, but sometimes it's the trip that, that we learn more from and we have, we have a greater experience from. And here's an example of, of, of how that worked. Uh, again, Coach Wooden, uh, UCLA coach, uh, won all these national championships. Winning was what he did over and over and over again, Hall of Fame coach. But his players said, and he even said, that he never talked about winning. He didn't talk about how many games they were going to win or even emphasize the word winning or, or, or the concept of winning. But what he did speak about was the process that was going to take to get to that place. And he emphasized the process so much that he didn't have to talk about winning. Winning was always the outcome because the process was done so well. And so I think that's, that's, that's a real key is that we need to do that in our, all of our life is that, hey, what's the, what are the ingredients? What's the recipe? What do I need to be doing? And then, then that proper outcome will come about. Then here's a, here's a fourth one that has been really helpful to me. They ask the question in one of the chapters is, who is in your circle? Um, major question they, they have, and here's the statement that they make, that those we spend time with greatly influence how we view the world and what we think about. Think about this. If you, if you spent 30 minutes a day with Jesus, if you could just just... In your mind, picture that. You could read the, the, the Gospels, read Paul's writings about the Lord, and you could just spend 30 minutes a day doing that. Don't you think that would impact your life? That would, that would change the way you view things? Hopefully you do that. Hopefully you spend time with the Lord every day. And, and hopefully you found that this, this really changes my life. And, and maybe there's somebody else influential that you could spend time with and how that would change your life. And certainly the, the reverse is true, that if you spent 30 minutes with a person who's not of good moral character and, and, and doesn't have your best interest in mind, it's going to impact the way that you live. Um, and so who we spend our time with, who we listen to, impacts how we view the world. And this is why it's so important to daily and regularly have an intake of the Word of God that I'm putting this into my life. Uh, through reading the Bible, I'm, I'm learning more about what God wants me to do. And, and those who spend time uh, with us uh, greatly influence how we view the whole world, all the things that we think about. Uh, this applies to your friends, your family, your co-workers. Uh, but you can also have a circle of people that are inside that circle uh, of influence in your life that you never actually meet. Um, I, I've never met Joshua Metcalf or Jamie Gilbert, but I feel like they have in many ways influenced my life because I've spent more than 30 minutes as I've read through this book, and now as I'm rereading it again, uh, they're influencing my life. They've become part of that circle for me. I think about men like Adrian Rogers that I've, I've loved to listen to preach. I've, I've, I've read his sermons. I've read his books. I've read the bi biography that his, his wife wrote about him. Uh, all those things have helped me to know him better, though I never met him, but he is part of my circle of influence, the people that have made an impact in my life. And you think about who that is in your life, that who is, who is influencing you. And then there's a fifth thing I would point, point you to that you find in this book. And one of the chapters is entitled, Don't Just Go Through It, Grow Through It. Grow Through It. Um, that's repeated again several times in the book. And, and it comes from this idea that anything that happens to me, I'm going to consider it to be in my best interest. It's an opportunity for me to learn and grow. What a great statement. Think about that. Anything that happens to me today is in my best interest. It's an opportunity to learn and grow. It's a statement about the sovereignty and providence of God, that God is allowing the things that happen in my life. He's in control of all things. I, I can trust His providence. 
And if we believe he's in control and we believe he has our best interest in mind, then that statement's true. Uh, anything that happens to me is in my best interest. It's an opportunity for, for, for to, to learn and grow. Romans says that God's wor- God works together uh, for us, for our good, and for his glory, and, and all things are working in that way. That doesn't mean that everything that happens is good, but that the ultimate result of what God is doing is going to bring about good and going to bring about his purposes. And so, great, great uh, statement. Don't just go through it, grow through, grow through the experiences we have in life. Number six, good goals are plans that we make. Um, uh, there, there's, there's nothing inherently bad about planning. There's nothing wrong about setting goals. I mean, you want to set goals, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, this book is going to tell you, hey, you, you probably want to rethink, rethink those things. But here's the problem, and, and this is what's stated in the book. Plans are often outside our control. We make a plan, and maybe it's for the, the, this year, or maybe it's for two years from now, maybe it's even just for the next month. But we can't foresee everything that's going to happen. We don't know that sickness may arise in our life, uh, that maybe something happens in our family that, that prevents us from being able to accomplish this. Maybe there is, uh, maybe it's an economic change that takes place in our life. Maybe we have to change jobs, or, uh, and we don't control what others do or what others don't do, and that may impact our, our, our plans. And so while plans are outside our control, the rest of the statement they make is this, is preparation lies within our control. For example, my goal is to, if my goal is, is say, I'm, I'm phys- for physical fitness, I want to I want to be able to bench press a certain amount of pounds, and I said by this by this time next year, I want to bench press 230 pounds. That's that would be my goal to be able to do that, and then then all these variables enter in. How healthy am I? How how you know am, is are, are weights available for me? Is there are there is there an economic issue there? Are there things that other people are doing that, that would prevent me from doing that? But what I do control is my preparation. Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing in order to reach that reach that goal? And daily, I'm working toward that goal. Daily, I'm working. I can I can work harder than I did the day before. Even if there are those setbacks in my plans, even if there are things that would prevent me from doing what I I have set a goal to do, daily I can practice total mental toughness. I can if I have a setback, I can go right back in and work hard the next day. Again, it goes back to process over the over the outcome. Then I want to show you one one last thing that I think is beneficial from this book. Again, I'm only covering about half of the book. Uh, there's a, a whole other half, and there's a lot in there, but this is really the, the, the first part of it. Um, it's, it's about seeing the big picture and everything. That's really kind of what the whole book is about. We all face difficulties and tragedies in life, and um, but that's not the whole story of your life. So many people I find, so many Christians even, have had something very tragic happen to them, and it's so debilitating that it clouds every other part of their life. This happened to me when I was a child, or this happened to me at my work, and, and everything is impacted by, by that event. But, but there's a chapter in this book that says that personal stra- tragedies are only part of the story. As a Christian, I shouldn't let, even if it's been a, a, a lengthy period of my life, let that be my whole story. There's more to your life than the tragedy and difficulty you face. If we only focus on that and we miss out on all the blessings and all the good times and good things God's done for us, and even His good nature towards us, we really, we really are telling the wrong story. Uh, this is part of what is mentioned in the next chapter. After that chapter is the book, is the chapter called The Path to Mastery. Uh, in, in every endeavor, uh, through a long term, and uh, when, it's, when it's long term and challenges are there, we're going to experience periods of growth. We're going to experience periods that we already plateau. We're going to experience setbacks where we, we actually go backwards instead of moving forward. But the trajectory is what we're looking at, is that in, in our spiritual growth, there should be this pattern of, of moving upward. I may have had a bad year. I may have had a bad week. I may have had a bad day, that, and, and I can't let that keep me from keeping moving forward. Again, again, by focusing on the process, I'm looking over the long haul, not at, not at just one, one single day. And uh, when I'm not seeing the results that, that I like, it's easy if I just focus on that moment in time to throw in the towel and give up. But otherwise, if I'm looking at the whole trajectory, I look back over a year, maybe years of time, I can look back and say, boy, I was, I'm, I'm not where I want to be, but here I am five years ago, I was not, I was not to this point. Again, I've only dealt with a small portion of this book. This book's about 250 pages. Um, there, are, there are over 60 chapters in the book. 
some of the chapters are only like two pages and so it's a really easy read you may you may be able to pick up and read for five or ten minutes or maybe you've got longer time to read but i would encourage you um, I think it's a great book to pick up, particularly maybe, and maybe not just for yourself, but if you know someone who's who's in athletics, or I think a lot of young people would benefit from reading this, maybe college students from reading this, uh, just to help them challenge in, in, in how they're going to view the rest of re- review the rest of their life. Uh, again, it's changed how I how I look at my own life, how I make decisions, how I've uh, uh, chosen just to look day to day, even about evaluating our staff. One thing that we've done. Uh, since I've been here and I've done in previous churches was to have a staff evaluation where where literally what we do is just set goals, action plans, and then we review, did you meet that goal? And I found that personally over years, years ago, it was very beneficial. It's become less and less helpful to me just to base it on what we write on paper. I want to have standards that we keep all year long and that we keep in each of our lives. And so we're in the process of actually changing, looking through some of those things. But I've learned a lot from this book. And again, I think it, it will be beneficial to you. Um, it's impacted uh, my weight loss journey. In fact, the next uh, version, next episode of Sunday Talks, I'm going to be talking with my wife, Carla White, who helped me get started on a, on a weight loss journey that's been very productive. And this book is really come right alongside the book I'm going to talk about we're going to talk about next week called Noom and so would encourage you to join me this book very inexpensive like most books you can go online I bought this one on Amazon for less than ten dollars it's a little used a little wear and tear wear and tear there but but uh, very effective and I, I would encourage you pick up burn your goals again I always thank you for for watching for listening in hope you'll share it with somebody a lot of people could benefit from a book like this uh, and there is a good Christian testimony in this book if you'll get to the end you'll see uh, how Christianity changed uh, one of these men's lives and I would encourage you to, to focus on that as well thanks again for watching appreciate you being a part of this and hope you'll share this with others